Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. All right, Virginia. This is the one where I'm having a very difficult time wrapping my head around it. And I'm curious. So I, I kind of think that what Tony Bennett wants to do is something that is not necessarily going to work in the modern age of college basketball. He wants to get guys to come in. He wants them to stay there for three, four, five years. He wants them to grow. He wants them to develop. He wants to turn them from top 100 kids into Malcolm Brogdon, from top 40 kids into Kyle Guy, from three-star recruits into Ty Jerome. Like He wants to get these dudes, bring them in, and develop them and grow them in his system. Um, I don't know if that still works with the guys that are at, good at that level. And uh, I got a little pushback from Virginia fans about that. They seem to be really excited about this team. I can kind of see what they're saying, but at the same time, you got a group with three sophomores basically that are expected to start in Isaac McNeely, Ryan Dunn, and the transfer from St. Thomas, uh, Andrew Rohde. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. Love all three of those guys. Love all three. I, I do too. They're, they're also young. And how often have we seen, um, seen Tony Bennett have that level of success with that youth? Uh, Jordan Minor was awesome at Merrimack. Fantastic in the NEC. Because that one I'm bigger. more worried about. Yeah, he was bigger and more physical and more athletic. Yeah, that one I'm more worried about. How those those three transfer. sophomores I like though. Oof. And and what about Re and Reese Beekman? Like he's good. We've been waiting for him to kind of take the star turn. Like I'm just fan of you're you're just you're gesticulating. Go ahead, say what you got to say. I'm just I, I wonder if I don't saying Tony Bennett lost his fastball. Like that's the wrong way to phrase. But like I, I wonder if what he does best still works. Okay, I don't think he's lost his fastball. I think he's got to get in the lab. And, and work on refining what his pitching arsenal is, to, to go off baseball terminology. I think Tony Bennett's got great stuff. He's got to add not, a knuckle curve. Well, a knuckle <laughs> Big curve. Big fan of the October. knuckle curve. He's got to throw a change up. A knuckle curve in October, or in college basketball terminology, March. Here's the thing. They went 25-8 and eight last year. They had a nice season. Yeah. <laughs> they had a great season. They went 15-5 and five in the ACC. They lost five of their top seven players. They lost a lot. And when you're not in the – like Kevin Keats had a had a horrible year two years ago, and what did he do? He quickly turned the thing at NC State with with just a mass of transfers, mm -hmm. a mass of, of transfers, quick hitting transfers. Yeah, he had a couple of, of players that he retained that were very good. We'll get to them. But for me, Tony Bennett did try to build this the way that he's built other teams. And college basketball has changed. And you're at the end of the day. I'm with you guys. I like what they brought in in Tony Bennett, his ideology. Andrew Rohde, Jordan Minor. Don't forget that Dante Harris was as as big as any reason why why Georgetown won the 2021 Big East tournament. So we have a, a small sample size, but Dante Harris won. He's a former Big East tournament most outstanding player. He's a good guard who needs mm -hmm. coaching and who I think could take off under Tony Bennett. But you are asking a guy from the NEC. Did he read, on, did, didn't Dante redshirt? Am I imagining that? He Your transferred man. midway and then redshirt. Midway. So, so he, he has he has a semester under his belt in the system, right? Yeah. 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 And so, so I like him. Uh, but I'll tell you what, guys. They're relying on players – who were in totally different conferences, much lower conferences. Let's let's call a spade a spade. And now they're asking those players to to really step up. They're young. They need Reese Beekman to be that dude. And and I don't know if Reese Beekman is a guy that's going to be averaging 15, 16 points per game. All right. I, I just and maybe he will be, and maybe he'll take that on and be that guy. Maybe he has to be that guy for this team. But what I think about Virginia is. I, I, I like their core. I can understand some of the players that they've got, but does this team have enough to be at the Virginia standard to compete for an ACC title? There are just four players from this team who played any minutes a year ago. Beekman, the lone starter, they lost a lot. And unless you're quickly turning it with the power of NIL, that's not what they did in their offseason additions. They went the traditional route, and I fear if they've got enough. And if Beekman's not the guy on the offensive end, who is? Why isn't Why isn't Beekman the guy? 
I, 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 I'm lost there. We you, just haven't we just haven't seen it. Haven't you seen know? it. Like, I, I wouldn't. I'm not talking about him. I, I think that he was good in the role that he was asked to be in last year, right? Where you're going to be a little bit of a facilitator. He had one of the best assist to turnover ratios in the country. Yeah, but that, that's different from scoring. He was. Yeah, I know, but the scoring is going to be the scoring is going to be skewed because of the style that they play. Like if if they're only scoring 50 points a game and he's scoring almost 20 percent of that, like it's 20 percent of the team's offense. I have I think that has less to do with him than it does what they're doing. My other concern with them, the last point I'll make about them is I'm concerned about what they do in the front court. Yeah. They just need to screen in the front court. Big news. The Almanac is officially back. The most exhaustive and comprehensive guide to the 2023-24 college basketball season is available for pre-order now. If you go to cbbalmanac.com, link is in the description below, you can pre-order for just $15.99 or 20% off the sticker price. The format is going to be a little bit different this season. Instead of an 850-page PDF, you'll be getting access to the full site with league-by-league -league PDFs available for download. The preview will be live on September 20th, so you have until then to be able to get your pre-orders in. So for insight for all 362 Division One teams from their head coaches and the experts that cover them, make sure you hit that link. I like this team, I, and I think they give – Isaac McNeely gives him something different than he's had since Kyle Guy, and that's somebody you could draw up to come off and shoot threes. Mm -hmm. That That's where I think it makes a difference this year. I think Andrew Rody can do the same thing. Uh, he's more of an all skill guy. He's more in the form of, um, of, uh, what's the kid's name that, uh, when they lost, he said, yeah, we are aware of that. Thanks a lot for telling Ty me. Jerome. Yeah. He's much more Ty Jerome than he is a Kyle guy. I think, I think Isaac McNeely is a bigger Kyle guy when it comes to stylistically. Uh, he's not Kyle guy. Kyle guy was McDonald's all American, but McNeely can come off screens. He can score off the move. You can set a pin down and he can come off and score. They haven't had that in some years. Who's the hey, last guy? Like, I got to, I got to go sign for a package real quick. Sorry. Do it. Do you like this team more than Clemson? No, no, because Clemson's got, a, a, if you put the two teams together, you would draft PJ hall first. Depends on where you're talking about. Like, as far as what? I think Clemson's got a better top. Well, I have Clemson third. Like, that's not like I got, I got, I got Clemson three, North Carolina four, Virginia five. There's more knowns with Clemson than there are with Virginia. Sure. But the style will carry them. And the fact that he fit like McNeely and Rhodey fit better. And then they had this dynamic point guard. Now that Kihei Clark's out of the way, I just feel like Virginia is going to be tough to handle because their point of attack is Beekman. Then you have guys on the wings that can score in different ways. They're calm. They know how to play. They don't have this Jack Salt figure to where they can go in and screen and be mucking up and be physical. But if Jordan Miner can be somewhat that at 6'8", 240, then I think it's going to help things. But I'm telling you, McNeely could be in line for an all-conference type year because he is that type of talent. He's got the size, and he's so strong that he's going to be able to hold guys off and be able to score when those games are 43 to 42 with a minute and a half to go. You can run some of these curl, you know, baseline cuts for him to get something in the corner because he can knock down those shots. Virginia hasn't had that in the last couple of years. Family. Yeah. They haven't had that. That's kind of where I differ a little bit. I think this team fits outside of not really having this overwhelming five man physically. Fair point. McNeely did prove himself against Duke and Furman mm -hmm. last year. He had double-figure performances in those games. And he shot 39% from three. And on a team that was very experienced, Terrence, mm -hmm. and I think it's interesting that he was able to find his way on the floor and play 22 minutes per game as a freshman on a team that minutes were not easy to come by for Virginia last year. If you were a reserve, if you were a guy that was kind of an afterthought at, at first glance, he, he, he became a, a key piece. And like you just said, he gives them perimeter shot making. There's just there's a level of unknowns with this Virginia team. Sure. And I got to say, big picture, in the Almanac, all right, uh, and folks, I think the Almanac is absolutely fantastic. And while I work for the Field of 68, I have no hand in preparing the Almanac. And T.O. agrees. It Same. is awesome. It's awesome. It is awesome. I got nothing to do with it either. It, it in was, the Almanac, great. in the Almanac, Tony Bennett said, 
quote, this is college basketball now. I just hope this isn't every year for us, end quote. That's a very interesting quote, and it comes off to me that big picture. He That, to me, says he wants to do things a certain way. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want to be a Jay Wright who retires because of they're seeing the way that this is all going. So at some point, Tony Bennett's probably going to have to shift some of what his foundational beliefs as a coach have been. Yeah, and and there's still ways to do it the way that he wants to be able to do it, right? There's You can still bring players in and kind of develop them, and I think you're seeing that a little bit with um, specifically McNeely and Ryan Dunn, right? Like those are two guys where they hang around for four years are going to be really, really, really damn good for Virginia. I just feel like they might be a year away and it's hard to be a year away when the guy who's going to be your best player um, probably won't be there in a year. Thank you for watching the field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends or check out the description for some other places that you can consume field 68 content.